us uh, at any time. So thanks everyone for joining today and welcome to our webinar about the uh, robotics in education. We, are, um, we will talk today about the use of, uh, of robots in classrooms and, um, and especially we will try to answer at best the question, how are humanoid robots designing the, the classroom of the future? Um, to answer this question, we will, we will be two, two people talking today. Myself, Amaury chevalier Chandopi, who is a, a education sales manager for, for SoftBank Robotics, and uh, Anne Clarisse. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming, for attending this webinar. I'm Clarisse Le Guyader, the EMEA Education Marketing Manager, working uh, with uh, Amaury every day. <laughs> Very good, thank you, Clarice. So to give you a, a quick uh, idea about the agenda of the day, we will first talk about, um, just present you quickly the company, even if most of you know already SoftBank Robotics, then we will just give you a few feedback of the impact of COVID situation on the education market. And then, um, then we will talk about uh, the use of humanoid robots, especially in education more, more more, more, with more details and finally present different solutions that can help you uh, also use our robots in your, in your schools or in your education programs. Um, to start uh, with, uh, with the presentation, so SoftBank Robotics is uh, part of the Japanese SoftBank group. We are the world leader in humanoid robots. We have sold more than uh, 25,000 robots in, in the world and more specifically in education already more than 6,000. So education is a very important sector for us and it's a sector in which our robots are showing a lot of value. We, have, uh, we are settled in most of the countries of the world. We have offices in in, um, in, in US, in, uh, in Paris, as well as in, in Japan and in China. But we are also working with partners and distributors that are sharing our robots in uh, many, many other countries, more than, more than 70 countries overall, um, so, which is very important. Uh, we are uh, not only working on education, but also on the B2B sector. And we are designing, of course, two robots that you probably know, Paper and Now. So, what is our vision and what can we, um, what is our vision concerning why do we, did we choose to work on humanoid robots? So in, in fact, uh, we know and we hear a lot in, the, in, in our days that uh, people are afraid of the future, are afraid of the machines, are afraid of the, the new technologies, the internet that are meant to control us, to alienate us. And we don't really believe on totally in this, in this, uh, in this thought. We really think that there is a way to use a machine and to use the power of, of robotics, in fact, to, to, to benefit humanities. We, uh, that's why we have created social robots that are, that are totally designed to interact with people. And we want also, of course, the education sector to benefit from, from our, our robots and this to at all levels, from the primary level, primary education until higher education. And of course, also including inclusive education for, for children with needs that, um, that, are all, that is also a, a part of the education that is very key to us. We want those children to be ready, thanks to our products, to the world of tomorrow, to this digital world, and to not to be frightened by it, but to look forward to, to integrate it because they, they will be the one, in fact, that will, who will create it. Um, a question that we, we often receive is that, why did you choose to focus on humanoid robots? Why didn't you do industrial robots or just um, focus on artificial intelligence? So for us, the humanoid shape of a robot has a, has a real value. The first value that is uh, obvious is that thanks to its humanoid shape, the robot can be proactive and create the, the conversation. It's not, thanks to this shape, it's not the human that will create the, the exchange with the machine. It's a robot that has a possibility to, inter to, to, call the, to call a human and to start this conversation and to start this exchange. This icebreaker ice is really key for us and it's one of the strengths of the shape. Uh, adding to, added to that, we can also say that these this arms for the robot, those eyes give a, a body language to what the robot says. And in fact, this is a really real differentiator before, between having a human in robot and having simply a, a TV or a computer or a phone talking you don't necessarily listen to this message, but now if the same message is, is said with arms moving and uh, with eyes looking at you, the, you are way more focused on what is being said and you want to listen. And in fact, this, it's this emotional empathy that is created that makes the strengths of our robot. Uh, our robot has also, have also the possibility to understand emotion of the human talking with and to adapt the speech 
depending of if the human is a child, an adult, or if the human is, uh, is happy, is upset. And uh, this kind of emotional empathy creates strong links also, for example, with, with the people in hospitals that are, feel lonely, that feel sick. Having a robot next to them creates this kind of company and, um, and makes them really feel, uh, yes, emotionally linked to a, to a robot, to a product that is in fact a machine. But as this machine looks more or less like a human in the shape, this machine, uh, this gives him a personality directly. Coming back uh, to the sick people uh, and the, the people, uh, yeah, the treatment and how our robots can use uh, with, uh, with illness. Uh, Clarice will give you a few words about the COVID situation now with education. Yes, as for many sectors, uh, the, the, the COVID has uh, caused massive scale disruption on the education one. So uh, as you can see, studies count more than 1.7 billion affected learners and uh, almost no country remains untouched. And 188 ask, uh, have to close the, the, the school due to the fact that uh, the environment became unsafe for teachers and students that were not prepared to this uh, situation. Uh, so the this crisis has uh, exacerbated uh, some existing problem like uh, the lack of innovation at school and it confirmed the needs of evolu evolution and the availability of, uh, of equipment for school, but also the pedagogical approach like the, the, the learn by doing that helps students to, to be more active in their learning and in relation to the, to the world around them. So, uh, as you know, this uh, crisis caused unequal consequences and especially th uh, on, uh, on funds throughout the world. But also it highlighted uh, some, um, um, some good solution, I mean, rapid development of learning technologies uh, in order to keep education running. So, and as you know, uh, there's also a lot of investment in the tech sector uh, that amounts to uh, 18.6 18, uh, billion in, uh, of investment. So in this context, the um, next slide, please. Yes. In this context, though, the three uh, main challenges that are imposed on the education sector is first innovate um, the, the, and, and show the needs of new technologies and application. And this is one of the effects of the, of the lockdown that the, there is a real awareness of the necessary appropriation of several technologies that support teaching and learning. Secondly, administrate the, the, the situation has totally changed the habits of educators and, and learners and so we, the, the, the safety and security must be ensured and uh, so the, the institution need to adapt to this, uh, to, this situation, to this situation, sorry. And lastly facilitate, even before the, 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 the COVID situation, it was difficult to um, sometimes to make schools interesting for, for children that are not always motivated to go to school. And uh, with this situation, the, the, the courses have been facilitated by um, distance learning approaches, but this also have some limitation because uh, um, it can be very, very lonely and detecting when you just have students uh, looking, at, looking at video or clicking on presentations. So again, it can be really boring for kids and they stay passive. And even teachers have been uh, um, uh, supported, but with too many uh, materials and products. So um, our actions at, uh, at SoftBank to uh, face those three challenges. Um, First, to, uh, to answer innovate, we are um, introducing uh, artificial intelligence in our robots. And thanks to this artificial intelligence, uh, we have uh, reinforced or created different solutions like the telepresence, mass detection, or the full voice control to, and all those applications to help you reducing the, the risk of uh, transmitting the, the virus. And lastly, to, to facilitate, we before the, we, we have already working, working with uh, partners to, find, to develop more interactive um, solution. Uh, and, um, and one famous was the possibility for children that were at hospital in a long-term uh, uh, illness to, to, to be in connection with, the, with, the, with their classroom thanks to an avatar. And, and of course now was the avatar. And so this solution can be 
uh, reinforced and used in the in the in the in the crisis that we live actually, but in another context. And for the motivation, we uh, we are continuing working with our partners to. Um, to have a um, solution and application uh, more interactive to, uh, for, for kids to motivate them and uh, support the teachers. So, um, because motivation is a, is a recurrent uh, issue that teachers uh, um, faces, they feel difficult to, to motivate children to, to study. And uh, so, so the question we might ask is how we can ensure that young children are motivated and are prepared uh, for the future? To answer this question and to, to go further uh, on the, the use of, uh, of robots in primary education, we can say that the issue is not only to, to motivate children um, to motivate children to go to school, but also to keep them focused on tasks because we know that after 20%, 20 minutes of uh, an annoying task, maybe children can, can be a bit bored and, and lose, their, lose their concentration. So this is really the, the strength of, uh, of our, our robot and what we have noticed in uh, having now working with children is that he managed to keep them motivated and, cult and to cultivate the, their interest. And in fact, we have had very interesting results with now and children that have been writing, for example, text, uh, like doing a, doing a handwriting exercise for more than one hour, while uh, usually they were limited to 20 minutes of concentration. And in fact, this is caused uh, by the fact that now is used in primary school as a teacher assistant, but not only it is also perceived by the children as a learning buddy. In fact, ch children see now, uh, of course, now is a robot, but they see him as a, or it as a character. They, in fact, they call him him, they call him now, they call him by the first name now, and it's a, really a buddy and they want to, to learn alongside now. And this is really a, a strength. And it's even better because now he's sometimes able to share messages, for example, prevention message, messages or here in the COVID situation, yes, uh, the safety gesture to keep. If, if an adult repeats them, children are sometimes annoyed of hearing always the same, uh, same messages by adults. If it's the, the now, the buddy, the character now that says this message, children are way more uh, uh, inclined or happy to listen to this message and will adopt it. Finally, a third step, which is very important, is of course, as we were saying, we want to prepare child to the world of tomorrow, and this starts with the youngest age, with the primary education. We want to make ch children discover uh, the, the STEM education to have first step in coding. We know that in the future, a lot of um, uh, um, uh, lots of jobs will be focused on uh, coding, will be uh, technical, uh, technique related. And making, having children discover coding through now is a great way to give them an idea of what the future will be and, what's, and maybe to create vocations from the, from the youngest age. Uh, to give you a more concrete idea, uh, Clarice will present a project that we have had in France called Now at School. Yes, this is a writing project entitled Shows Your Own Adventure Story. Uh, and it consisted of creating a story of, uh, of multiple choice that will be told by, by the robot by now. And so this experience uh, was during six months uh, in an elementary French school. Uh, we worked with the, foundation, with the foundation to support the teachers. And uh, there were two teachers, two classroom uh, of uh, nine year old uh, pupils. and. Together with this experience, we, uh, we have done um, a study with um, two ethnographers that observe and analyze the, the, the behaviors and the situation uh, uh, with uh, kids using uh, robots to, 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 to learn. But, and the, the, the three objectives were, uh, uh, but I think Nicolas Demart from on the video is, uh, is better than me to explain the, the objectives. <laughs> L'intérêt pédagogique de ce projet, il voit trois objectifs principaux. Euh, un projet autour, bien évidemment, de la maîtrise de la langue, tant sur le plan de l'oral que sur le plan de l'écrit. Un élève qui sait bien s'exprimer, qui sait bien écrire, euh, se débrouillera mieux dans la vie que quelqu'un qui sera en difficulté. Un second objectif qui est autour des compétences liées à la science informatique. Là, on est vraiment dans ce qu'on appelle aujourd'hui le codage de l'information et aussi le, la programmation. C'est un objectif qui permet aux élèves de comprendre 
ce qu'est un algorithme, ce qu'est un programme. Et en fait, on apprend la programmation en programmant soi-même. Et puis, le dernier objectif, c'est un objectif plutôt euh, autour des compétences sociales. On voit des élèves qui coopèrent, qui écrivent une histoire à plusieurs, qui ne sont pas forcément d'accord, mais qui vont s'expliquer, qui ne vont pas se disputer, ils vont discuter, ils vont argumenter, échanger. C'est probablement un projet qui, euh, comme tout projet d'écriture, demande de la créativité, de l'imagination. L'important, c'est de permettre aux enfants, dans un monde hyper technologique aujourd'hui, de ne pas subir, mais de pouvoir agir sur le monde et donc agir en connaissant le fonctionnement de ces outils informatiques. So as, the, so as Nicolas said, the three main, uh, it's a multidisciplinary project that integrates the whole French school program, so writing, uh, language study, but it, it helps them to develop skills, to um, uh, computer science skills and also social skills because they, they learn to work together as a group. So this project in primary school can be also uh, initiated uh, and enriched in secondary school when they start to learn STEM topics. So here again, our robots can be an assistant for teachers and to, to motivate learners. And, uh, and the question that for, for this segment would be how to make the most of our core curriculum and the transition into, in tr and transition, sorry, into a friendly way of teaching. Uh, talking about secondary education, I think that one of the most common challenges is the fact that we are at an age where, uh, I mean, young teenagers uh, don't really know what they want to do later. Working with, and working with a rob and in fact, they are facing a lot of different topics and they don't really know what they prefer and what they will want to continue to do in their job later in their life, for their life. Working with, with a robot might be a way to, to open them the doors to, to STEM, STEM topics because it's a very nice uh, pers personification, we can say, of uh, what many of those science, uh, science, uh, science lessons can be. We have heard, we have all heard a lot of teenagers say, why am I learning mathematics? I will never use it later. Why am I learning physics? Why am I learning all those sciences? Now, when, when, a teen when those students come and, and see a now kicking a ball in a, in a physics class, they really have a, a concretization of what they want to, what they wanted to, uh, what they, I mean, what they were discovering in the classi and, and classes. And it can make a lot of uh, students that were not really interested in STEM topics suddenly really attracted by this topic and wanting to, wanting to dig further in the future on those, on those points. Another approach is that um, thanks to our robots, our robots, the main functionality of our robots is the fact of interacting with people. And in fact, interaction is the base of teaching, of course, teaching and learning. So our robots can be really used by teachers to teach all, the, all those di different, uh, different topics from, of course, uh, the STEM topics, but also languages, also history topics, geographic, or even uh, literature. Um, and it's really just the fact of sharing information by quiz, by asking questions, or just providing a description of different concepts. Uh, that children will, as they are really attracted by the robot, will feel very more well, maybe motivated uh, and it's changed their way of teaching, in fact. The third very important point is that starting to work with robots creates um, a world of, of community. In fact, they, are, they, uh, they, they, will, they start to join this community of, uh, of, uh, of developers, this community of uh, Yes, of robot, robotic programmer, and we have noticed that it then generates uh, all these project-based learnings that will be used in the in the jobs of tomorrow, and they, that they need to learn from the youngest age. And uh, talking about project-based learnings, I think that Clarice will give you a more uh, more concrete idea of the kind of project that uh, we are doing in high school with uh, with our robots. Uh, this uh, this project is called Now Challenge. Yes, indeed. Each year we have uh, we we are working with uh, Scuola di Robotica in Italy uh, to uh, to organize the the Now Challenge, which is a famous competition in Italy. And students each year are very excited as they work on the project during all uh, not all the year but a part of the school year. 
and they prepare this competition and uh, the objective is to be selected for the finals. So the different objective uh, of uh, this uh, now challenge, but as you can see, the, the, uh, there are many participants and each year more, the, the, the competition is growing more and more with more team. Uh, but the, 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 the objectives of Scuola di Robotica and the teachers uh, working on this now challenge is to uh, to uh, push students to explore the potential of humanoid robots in many sectors uh, and sectors of everyday life. So every year there is a new social topics uh, studied like, uh, and the most recent one is cultural, cultural heritage preservation, but they also studied social inclusion in education, elderly care solution, things like that. Uh, also, the, one, the second objective is uh, to test the acquisition of technical skills, programming and uh, problem solving development skills. And of course, it, it, uh, they, they, they can observe that increase, it increased students' interest in STEM studies. Uh, again, it's better to hear about uh, uh, Emmanuel Michele, who, who is the, the one who organized each year this uh, now challenge, famous now challenge. Oh, sorry. Uh, thanks to our challenge, we can teach uh, students the future. The future is very important because we have to involve our students, our children everywhere to understand how technology can help us. So we are organizing our challenge not only to teach technology, but also to teach to help people thanks to technology. And now Pepper will be a very good technology to help people. So it is that we believe with technology, we can help people improve the future of our world. So, uh, as you can see, Emmanuel Michele is always really uh, motivated and this type of challenge encouraged the, the, those students from secondary education to continue the education in STEM field as they have a first overview of learning across disciplines and they have started to think critically and use technology to face a social real world problem. So those projects support them to find their way, choose their vocational training or give them ideas for their transition to working life. So we have this question now about how to transition into the future with creative robotics technologies. And this brings us to the maybe one of uh, our most one of the sectors on which our, our robots are used the most which is uh, the higher education and the research of course we have a lot of partnership with uh, universities with colleges and with research institutes because our robots are showing several strengths on the um, and uh, and several interests for those institutes the first strengths and the first value proposition is that a robot such as Pepper or Nao is, a, is an all-in-one development package, which means that it combines a lot of different sensors, a lot of different actuators like cameras, of course, microphones, speakers, a tablet, and also tactile sensors or sonars or lasers. So it's really a combination all-in-one in which you have all those notions that you want to teach in higher education in the, in the same object, in the same machine, in the same robot. And this is a really useful, of course, for professors that can teach combination of the sensors at the same time using only one, uh, one device. The, the other approach, which is also uh, uh, in which it is a very interesting uh, combination in the fact that there are l many different programmation language that can be taught thanks to our robots. We, uh, the, the, first, uh, the first one that I would mention is the most, most used, one, used one in programmation right now, the most taught in universities, it's Python. So we can, you can program with both Python on both now and paper, um, but you can also program with JavaScript, with C++, with, uh, you have web, web notions thanks to the, 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 the tablet of paper, so you can teach web, web programming. You can also, also touch, uh, teach now the, um, the, the mobile development with Android on paper in the new latest release of the operating system of paper. So all those different languages can be taught with just one and the one and same robot. And this is really powerful, of course, for teachers that want to this modularity and to share the, the, the students all the different notions. What the last point that is very important is that uh, there are both the possibility to teach very basic level of, of programming on our robots until very advanced levels of programming and, and uh, very low level, very advanced research. And what is very nice is at any stage, 
having a robot, in fact, impersonates, gives life to code. And this is a difference when you teach students in university how to code. They, it's just lines on a computer. And once they put these lines in a robot, suddenly the, the lines take, take life in a way. And, and this characterization of, uh, of coding is a very good way to, to give uh, students the, the will to continue and to, to dig deeper in the, in the, in the STEM, uh, STEM, uh, STEM, uh, STEM notions. Another topic uh, and, and another reason why we are working a lot with research institute is that our robots are very advanced research, research platforms. They are used in many, of course, human robots interaction studies. There are lots of thesis, including our thesis program included our robots because you can do, you can do physical psychological research. And also you can, it's a very good way to embody uh, AI, AI research and machine learning algorithm. In fact, I have uh, read today an article uh, concerning the a new collaboration between uh, Intel and Heidelberg. It's a collaboration on the artificial intelligence uh, researches. And a notion that I, uh, a line that was written, so there was a picture of paper on the article. And a line that was written and that was very interesting was saying, so machine learning doesn't have a face, but, but if it ever does, we'd like that face to look something like this, staying paper. And this is the, really the best compliment that we can hear because it's uh, really our will to, to give life to algorithms that are very abstract and from the beginning and that can suddenly be concrete, con concretized in, a, in an object and in a robot. Of course, when another very, very important point on which we, uh, we put a lot of resources as well is the research to, on how to improve the life of people with disabilities because we really believe that, that humanoid robot can help. A last point on which uh, we are, and, and a last reason why we believe that school, uh, universities and colleges uh, like to work with us and are really uh, Yes, and are really happy of our collaboration. The fact that the robot paper is often used as at uh, as a institute ambassador, that means we see a lot of paper in presentation or in articles, and it's a very good brand promoter, of course, and it's a very good way, thanks to the traffic generation that it creates, it's a very good way to collect insights and to gather that data through, uh, through a platform that is more friendly than a form, basically. To, to give you more, more advanced details about our collaboration with schools, uh, Clarice, Clarice will, uh, will share some data with you. Yes, uh, here is uh, an example of our education network and supporters because we are working with uh, many universities and we have deployed more than 6,000 robots in 400 institutes across 70 countries and more, this, or more than that. So the, because the universities um, uh, are teaching with our robots or do some studies with them. And now when paper are used in 50% of social robotics program. And we also participate in numerous partnerships, binding universities and our innovation team. And we are counting on those partnerships to develop um, robotics to the next level. And for most of those, um, uh, universities that you can see on this slide, we retrieve them in the most important uh, international robotic competition called uh, RoboCup. I don't know if most of, of you know RoboCup, but RoboCup is the most, uh, the biggest uh, robotic competition in the world. Indeed, it involves uh, lots and lots of different countries. In it's, uh, in fact, there are very lot of different leagues. So it doesn't only concern all humanoid robots. There are also uh, leagues for safety robots. There are leagues for industrial robots. It's a really huge event and it's totally independent, of course. It's taking part uh, all over the world. So for example, uh, so the, this year edition has unfortunately been canceled, but will take place, ne take place next year in France, in, uh, in Bordeaux. But uh, last year, it was, the year before it was in Sydney, the year before it was in Montreal, the year before it was in Tokyo. So it's really a, a worldwide competition and we have teams for all the countries uh, of the world. And it's, uh, so it's a great event every time. Uh, co concerning RoboCup with our robots, um, one of the most famous league of RoboCup in the, is the Football League in which robots are, are playing football. There are different levels, but the standard platform for this league is the Nao robot. So it's Nao here. And what is very interesting there is that thanks to those researchers, the nows are really able to, to behave by themselves and to move and to detect the ball by themselves. They are not controlled 
by someone behind. They are really autonomous. They play together as a team. And, um, and the idea is that to get them every year, thanks to uh, this wide community of research, to, to improve them and, to, um, and to, yes, to, to make them perform better every year. There is also a league with paper, in which paper is, uh, is accomplishing tasks uh, of uh, butler task at home, I would say. So gra grabbing objects, carrying objects, helping, in fact, helping people in the house. This is also a very important league. Uh, but I think I will, uh, I will show you this video to give you a, a better idea and more concrete idea of what Robocup is. Oh, again. So the, the goal for Robocup is to, uh, by the time of 2050, be able to have a team of robot players that can play against the current human world champion. And with the now and our standard platform league, uh, we are on a nice step in between where we have a humanoid robot that is a bit smaller, um, but where, with which we can, we can learn how to um, get closer to this 2050 goal. Yes, yeah, so we are RunSwift from the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. I am Dr. Timothy Wiley, I supervise the team. One of the biggest reasons we're involved in the Standard Platform Leagues is we use it as a big part of our research and teaching program, especially with the, the NOW robots. We can get a team of NOWs together, lots of undergraduate students, they do it as part of their coursework. So they get credit for what they're doing, we bring them to the competition and, you know, getting robots to play soccer is a lot of fun, but we also use this as a platform to help teach how to work with robots because that's going to be a very big part of technology in the future. So thanks to this video, what I really like in this video is that you, you see that it's really a part of a research program. And what is very nice is that, of course, the different teams are competing, which means that there is a, there is a, a tournament, a competition, and a, and a winner every year. But they are also collaborating. And the concept behind this is that every year, the winning team has to share their source code to the other team so that they start each year in an equality level and they can all of them can improve in their way the, the, the skills of their team and then share again. So it's a really good community work for researchers. And this social side of robotics is really important for us, of course. And even more when we do this kind of research on the, on the children with disabilities, with difficulties program on which we are very involved. And the question that we can have is that is how we can help with our robot to, to reach equal standards of education for every children and, and every adult. Uh, yes, uh, the, um, the, the NAO is, uh, uh, especially the NAO is uh, used for specialized education because, uh, and even paper could do, uh, because uh, the, the, our robots have a neutral and soft expression and it offers an uh, effective and inclusive environment to promote education for students with disabilities, such as autism. So, um, and our emotional robots, they help the, the, the children to reduce uh, shyness and, and reluctance. And we have uh, really good feedback from the different um, educators and uh, specialized, and te uh, specialized teachers uh, that uh, experience um, using now with uh, autism kids. So, and they said that they are really good tools to encourage the, the acceptance uh, um, in, in, reg in a regular classroom settings. So um, maybe you can launch the, the video and... The man mm -hmm. on the right side of the space shut Do you know we're right side? Do you remember? Yeah. Take a guess. Right here. Try again. Right here. Mm -hmm. Come on, get it over on there. That's it. Yes. You place the man on the right side of the space shuttle. Very good, Jack. <clears throat> Thank you. So this research at UConn is looking at how can we use robot-assisted therapy to help children to become more in sync with those around them. Try and follow my hands. Drum with one and then the other. Let's try and keep to a rhythm. I love drumming and rocking out with you. Let's continue playing. 
So uh, just to give you an idea of the different uses, uh, so uh, the robot is used as a therapeutic mediation, and we, I think we, we should have a, a dedicated webinar to talk about uh, the specialized education, but just to give you an idea, uh, we have the, 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 the great feedback from uh, uh, teachers saying that uh, it support them in uh, developing social skills uh, with kids, and they have more interaction, um, and it helped them to uh, manage their, their emotion. So uh, also the presence of um, of now in the uh, in the in the class is um, is an openness to to the world and uh, help them to 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 change the the, the behaviors and uh, and taking even some risk in their in their um, in their movement. So uh, yeah, this is a, a great project that uh, SoftBank. Uh, uh, is uh, in, in, in uh, sorry is involved because it's really important for some years for us to uh, to follow them and to support all the, the 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 educators that are doing this experience with uh, with now. So even maybe among you, there's some uh, uh, feedback or experience that you already have, and we, I mean, after this webinar, we don't hesitate to share or to communicate on that. So it will be very helpful also for us. So yeah, so um, after this long presentation and uh, about all the different use cases, different uh, application, and we 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 now have um, this question: How how can we make uh, the most of our robots? And Amory will uh, uh, explain you the different tools and resources we have. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Clarice. You may probably wonder how, okay, I have seen a lot of different possibilities, a lot of things I can do with robots, but how can I really apply it to my classroom? Uh, so I will present here different tools and resources that we can share with you that are available and that can be used in every classroom of the world, in fact. The first tool, and it is our, the SoftBank historical tool to program on robots, is called Choregraph. I don't know if uh, most of you know it, but for people that that don't know, it's, uh, it's very nice to have an introduction. So this software is really the, the first software that we have created to give life to robots. And what is great is that it has a very simple logic. It's a drag and drop box logic. So in fact, you don't have to know coding to program and to make robots do things. You simply need to combine boxes. And those boxes are, are different action and it follows a timeline and with time the robots perform actions and is able to, yes, simply to, to act, which is the most important. So it is great. It is not, you don't need specific coding skills to program a robot. Every, everyone can do. If you want to have a more advanced use of our product, you can also go more deeper in choreograph, into choreograph, and you can open every box and program on them. Every box are uh, in fact con uh, yeah, formed with Python code and Python code is a, so it's a programmation language and you can modify every box to, to adapt the action of, of the robots to what you want the robot to do. Or you can also create new boxes with your own code in a very easy way and uh, so that you extend the, the limits of the, uh, yes, extend the capabilities of the robot as you want. And this is very important. Choreograph is available for both now and paper. And now to, we have another tool that is more recent. It's uh, the, with the new OS of paper that is supported on Android, there is a possibility to program on paper as you would program, in fact, on a mobile, Android mobile phone or a mobile tablet. It opens the world of robotics to a new kind of developers, which are, uh, which are developers of tomorrow. In fact, the mobile developers are more and more needed because of course, you, as you all know, we have more and more Android tablets, Android phones everywhere. And so now every developer that have Android skills that can develop for a mobile have the possibility to, to, create, uh, to create application for, for paper. It, and it's very intuitive. We have a spe specific plugin to Android Studio. It's the same, uh, the same uh, screen, the same, the same tool as usual. It's just few new, new APIs to, to give orders to the robot and the robot will uh, act but it follows the same logic as the usual, uh, the usual mobile application. So it's, yes, what was great with this uh, new, uh, new plugin for Android Studio is that we opened the, the robotic world to, to a new family of, of developers. A third point, if you are really not a developer and you don't want to, to have 
anything to do with technical notions. You can also, so here we are maybe more targeting professors in primary or secondary education that, uh, that, yeah, that don't know anything about computers and that, that don't have really time to dig into it. Our partner ERM from, from France uh, is providing a solution combined of two parts to, uh, to use now in, uh, in primary education. On the left, you see uh, the solution Blockly for now. So I don't know if all of you know Blockly, but Blockly is very similar to Scratch. It's, it's uh, the kind of language that is really a standard right now to introduce children to STEM education, to the STEM world, with uh, little boxes, little colorful boxes that are very logical. And thanks to, to those boxes, you can teach children condition, loops, or, and so it's very intuitive. And now with those boxes, you can program now. So it's even better for children that can make a robot talk with very intuitive boxes. Uh, there is also another part of this content is a tablet interface for professors that are afraid to receive now and not have, and that don't know what to do with the robot afterwards. Thanks to this tablet and thanks to this application, they can use it, use a tablet really as a remote control and start different application on the robot, for example, uh, quiz on sports, quiz on colors, quiz on any any other topic, in fact, and have both him, uh, the professor control the robot and having children also interact with the robot by uh, answering questions on the robot, for example, or having the robot talk by themselves. So it's a, another way to interact with the robot, which is re way more user-friendly, of course, for professors that are a bit afraid of, uh, of uh, those, those technical, uh, technical objects. Finally, we have had in the past a lot of feedback from professors that were saying, we love your robots, but in fact, we don't really know what to do with it. Uh, it is great, you, you show that there are a lot of possibilities, but as we don't have technical uh, and concrete examples, we are afraid to start projects and we, 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 we don't know how to apply and how to use the robot in our classrooms. That's why we have designed with, um, to answer this need, we have designed with uh, our partner LPE, German partner, um, two ebooks that are available for for now and that provide curriculum content for for for, for professors in fact so the level for those ebooks is more maybe high school and uh, the beginning of uh, higher education and in fact in the first ebook you there will be the the basic of programmation with now so it's the use of choreographs that you have seen before the very easy exercises very easy examples to give an idea of how to use now in the second ebooks, it's even better because there are 20 different project ideas for, for professors to, yes, to simply share projects with, uh, with, uh, with the students. There is, of course, corrections for, to help the professor giving the right answer. And those uh, projects are very uh, different, but use all the possible skills of the robot from uh, hearing to uh, vision, face recognition to color recognition. There is also a few projects about grasping objects. And so this content is available for free on our website, and it's a very good way to bring more value to your, um, to your project with, uh, with NAO. Feel free to go and, on our website and to download it uh, as soon as you want. And um, finally, to go for maybe more, a bit more advanced users, we have now this website called Developer Center that is available that provides lots of, so of course, the basic developer documentation for paper, but also lots of different uh, blog articles, examples, and uh, lessons to maybe to, to program more advanced bricks on the robot, like, uh, for example, uh, I don't know, integration of AI algorithm, integration of, uh, so very more advanced coding, but all the code is shared on our website. It's also available for everyone. It's called Developer Center. Feel free to have a look or to ask me or to ask us if you have more, more advanced questions on them uh, uh, in the future, on this website in the future. Finally, we will, uh, we will go quickly on, uh, on uh, I mean, with the, with the back to school time, we know that this school year is a bit different from others. There is few, um, there is few uh, less budget, uh, organization is more complicated uh, because uh, students have often to stay home or, or can, you, you cannot organize the year as usual, and we know that it is a challenge for, for universities and schools. But in the meantime, we don't want, we don't want this to be a limitation for schools to, to, and for students to work with robots. So that's why we have created few offers specific to this year. 
to uh, to specific to this year to um, to uh, to uh, to uh, yes to to be able to work with robots. The first offer is a rental service offer. It is an offer that a lot of schools have asked us in the past. It, there is a possibility to um, so now to to rent robots for both now and paper. It can either be the fact of avoid, we know that our robots can sometimes be a, a, a concrete investment. So this is a way to reduce the investment on time and to spread it on more months. There is um, also the possibilities to maybe to try a project with a robot on a few months and then to decide to purchase it if you desire. So now this is possible. Feel free to ask us about more details about it. We have also another offer, which is a bundle uh, combining both now and paper for the price of one paper. So it's a very attractive bundle. The only detail is that the paper uh, in, the, in the bundle is a reconditioned unit, which means it has been used in the past on other projects, but it has been reworked by your repair team. It's good as new, and it comes with two years of warranty. So for you users, it's really transparent. It's really same as having a, a new paper, but it's a very, so it's a very good offer. It's an offer reserved to... Uh, to uh, the academic uh, institution. And finally, we have a, a, an, even more, uh, uh, an even more aggressive discount for our customers that, but as it is, it's kind of a reward for schools that are already customers that have already working with now our paper and that want to continue or to expand their projects with our robot. They have the possibility to purchase paper with a 40% discount. So same as for the bundle, it is a reconditioned paper, but it is of course working perfectly. And so it, which makes the price of paper at uh, more or less 8,500 euros without taxes. So it's a very nice offer that is unfortunate, I mean, unfortunately limited to um, our academic customers because uh, it's, we see it really as a reward in wanting them to show that we want to continue working with them. If you are not uh, one of our customers yet, you can benefit from the bundle uh, bundle offer, which is also very interesting and a very real chance. This offer is uh, will last until was meant to last until the end of October, but we understand that with the beginning of this school year, it can things can take uh, and purchase uh, process can be, take a bit longer. So we will probably expand it until the end of November. Finally, I think Clarice will uh, be very happy to to summarize this very long presentation. <laughs> Yes, thank you for staying until the end. Uh, um, so if we want to summarize uh, all this presentation, uh, we can say that the three value proposition of our robots are uh, the role of uh, teaching assistant, but also a development platform, and uh, and last but not least, a, a really great companion for special needs. So, and coming back to the COVID time, uh, our robot can be a good platform our characters to spread the road about the safety gesture to protect and be protected. So uh, again, thank you very much for uh, for being so numerous to this uh, webinar. We we have uh, again some minutes to for a Q and A. And thank you, Amory. Yeah, thank you for being so talkative. If you want to stay, we can maybe take it a bit longer to answer questions. But otherwise, anyway, the, the answer will be available in replay. Uh, it's true that there are a lot of topics to mention when we are talking about robots and education and it had to, to take time. Clarice, I think you have the yes, question. Yes, I'm looking at the question. Um, so one question is about how can we access the software program to control now? So maybe you can uh, answer to this question, uh, Marie. Yes, very easily. I can simply uh, simply share with me, uh, send me an email and I will put you in contact with our, our partner, uh, ERM, and we, we can see together how you can uh, get access to this, uh, to this software. You have my email here uh, below and anyway, we, I will send you the, an email after to all the participants, an email after the, the presentation with the possibility to access the replay and to to ask, uh, to send us uh, any question that you might still have. Um, another question for you, Amory, is uh, do you have now developer course and then certification? Certified now, ah, okay, it's meant not be about training, but uh, no developer course uh, and certification. Okay, so we, we have a program for, 
training, uh, training that is offered, but we don't have really a program for now developers and certification anymore. If you want to discover the work uh, on now, we can either set up a training session that we provide uh, quite regularly every few months, or we can also see with different partners that we have how, in depending on the country where you are, how we can set up, yes, a, a training session or a, a developer course. Um, do you know how who is carrying out educational research using now? I would like to be uh, sorry because I don't see all the questions. Sorry about that. Um, I would like to be able to access this network to help me with my own research. Please, yes, I think, uh, um, as Amoy said, uh, for, for the other question, you can um, just share with us uh, your, um, your educational research topic and we could uh, uh, share with you the, the different contact and see uh, who is doing the same. Um, so, a uh, question for you, Amori. Will you develop more advanced tracking modules that are integrated with the basic software of now Pepper? Or paper. So we are we are developing more and more, of course, both of our robots all the time. We have already new bricks available in um, in uh, on paper on the latest version of paper, the Android version, uh, which uh, improves the uh, tracking and the people detection of paper. Uh, we are also working in uh, adapting those bricks to uh, to now as well. Um, what version of Python uses Choregraph? So this is a question that we often ask. Choregraph still uses um, the 2.7 version of Python. We know that it is a version that is now not uh, supported anymore by, uh, by Python, but we, we will uh, integrate um, the latest version of Python in the, in, in the yes, we, we know that the future release of, of, our, of our software, we integrate the, the latest version of Python. Yeah, um, so as Choregraph coll collaborative coding features, uh, for example, a team of user students that can program at the same time? No, Choregraph is uh, unfortunately um, a local, uh, local software, so every student have their own, uh, their, they have their own interface and cannot program at the same time. However, it can be connected with, uh, with Git as uh, any other programming software and, uh, and adapt to, um, and adapt to the, yes, to, I mean, like any, in any programming world, uh, you can program several person on the same, pro work several person on the same project. Is a simulator of now with dynamics available? So we are, it's, we had a simulator and now in the past, it is true that we, the, the bridge is not, not really supported anymore by our side. We really focus on choreograph and the hardware of now itself. Uh, it is. It is still. Uh, it is still. Uh, uh, I think in maybe if you maybe working with a robot uh, Robocup uh, environment, you will find maybe answers and this kind of uh, simulator still available. Um, another question: Are you developing new ways to improve integrated speech recognition of children's speech? This is currently a major barrier to smooth interaction. Yes, indeed. And um, as we mentioned, we know that speech interaction is always a challenge. It's already a challenge with adults. It's even more a challenge with children. And that's why sometimes we, we find other ways to interact with uh, tech type sensors of, for example, in the solution of, uh, of ORM that we have shown previously, the fact of interacting through the tablet doesn't, of course, benefit the, the hearing capability of now, but shows um, uh, is another way to, to give an answer, to answer the question of now and is very appreciated by, uh, by students. Um, so there's a question about also uh, release Python 3 support for paper and now. Um, yeah, I think I have already answered it. Oh, sorry. We are, it's, it is a, a, a challenge that we, we, we are aware of and our team are working on and uh, will probably come uh, in the near future. 
Have you used paper and now in hospital setting? Yes, uh, working with hospitals is very important for us. It's a kind of environment in which we are showing, uh, our robots are really showing a lot of this companion value. We, if you desire, feel free to send us, to contact us uh, on our emails and we will share us more case studies and more concrete examples of how the, oh, oh, sorry, paper is talkative behind me. So yes, um, yes, we have a lot of examples to share with you. How to organize a RoboCup challenge? And uh, uh, it's, uh, it may be a, a bit vague, so do not hesitate to send me an email uh, uh, with the, the, the question you have about the RoboCup challenge because um, there are different leagues we are uh, participating. So uh, it depends So if you want to do something more local or if you want to participate to the international one. But do not hesitate to send me uh, your request directly to my email and explain exactly what are your needs or what you think about. Um, what is the links on, of, to the site when will be updated post be available? I know there are a few issues with the files that go with. So yes, we are uh, working actually on uh, updating this, uh, those e-books. So uh, they are already available on our website and we have noticed that we, had, we need to make uh, some correction. So this will be done in the next few weeks or, or months uh, as soon as we have uh, finished to, uh, to make all the modification. Uh, so I'm afraid we won't have time to answer to all the questions. Maybe we can uh, uh, answer to them separately after this uh, webinars. Webinar, sorry. Maybe a last one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that for, for some of them, it needs some more time to, to come back into details for each, so. Yes, anyway, thank you very much for yeah. sharing your question. I think there are probably topics that need to be, uh, yeah. to, be, uh, to be deepened more in detail. So we would be very happy to exchange with you and to, to advance together to answer your questions. Getting feedback from the education community is key for us. As Clary said, we are deeply bound with this community and we want to make robotics advance together. So feel free to contact us and we will be very happy to answer those questions and to work together uh, to help you use our robot and, to, and you to help us improve, of course, the behavior of paper and now. Yes, questions have been registered, so we will come back to each of them. So. Thank you all. I think it's now the end. And uh, we hope to see you at your, uh, our other webinars because we have many topics to, uh, uh, to present. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.